Look unto your neighbor and say, neighbor, you are going to be blessed. Those who are watching all over the world, may the Lord bless everyone. I said some things at the first service. May the Lord bless everyone with your support and everything. I went to Ghana, and by the grace of God, I'm back. So with your prayers and everything, may the Lord bless you. Shout hallelujah. And uh, I have my brother here, Eric, and uh, I said it earlier on. Uh, when he visited home and the wife told me that, uh, Pastor, I'm going to get something. I said, no problem. Not knowing that he wanted to visit uh, my mom's house. So when they started uh, knocking the door, sat on the ground and said that my mother should open the door and started weeping. I heard about everything, shout amen. amen. But let me tell you this, in life, whether you like it or not, one day, one day, everybody will go. Am I right? When it is your time. When we go to heaven, I will sit, I will discuss something with my brother uh, Solomon. Yeah, I will discuss some things. You know, one time he said that money answers all things. You know, money cannot answer debt. Am I right? If money can answer all things, there is no way rich people will die. We have some millionaires, they are dying right now. Hmm? You could have said that money can answer some things, you know, shout amen. amen. So it's appointed once a month to and after judgment, shout amen. Uh, it was great. May the Lord bless everyone, every member, everybody, those who couldn't go. I know that your spirit and your, uh, was with us, your prayers and everything, shout amen. amen. God bless everybody. I said it earlier on, Mr. Atta. Some people came, Mr. Prince, uh, Jane, and Paulina. Paulina came all the way from Takwa, spent uh, three days with us. May the Lord bless everybody. Shout hallelujah. I know that your labor shall not be in vain. Shout amen. God bless everybody. Do you have your Bible? If you have your Bible, take your Bible. And somebody asked me, brother, are you going to, are you guys going to do funeral here in the hotel? No, there'll be Thanksgiving. It will be a Thanksgiving service. Shout amen. amen. There'll be no funeral. We just have to give praise to God. Shout amen. amen. Do you have your Bible with you? Take your Bible. Is it the New Testament or Old? You have both? I mean, you have both? Your Bible is too small. Mm. Shout amen. amen. What's up, what they say? God bless you. Reverend Missy. And you book all. I know you know that one. Shout amen. The book of 2 Samuel. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord did a mighty things, am I right? At the first service. The revelation that came was very powerful. It's God that revealed a secret. Shout amen. amen. The secret things belong to God. Those who are watching all over the world, may the Lord bless everyone. May your life never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Shout hallelujah. Second Kings chapter 6. Excuse me. Second Samuel chapter 6. And verse number one coming. Do we have six? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Spirit of God. David again brought together all able young men of Israel. 30,000. Can you see it? 30 what? Thousand. He and all his men went to Bala in Judah to bring up from there the ark of God. Everybody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> this morning, I want to talk about bring back the glory. 
<laughs> Bring back the what? The glory. Listen to me. Bumi, how are you? Long time. No more traveling, traveling, eh? Position you here now. Shout hallelujah. Because you have become too busy. I can see you on Facebook, moving up and down. My daughter will be singing. Eh? Moving up and down. Shout hallelujah. I tie you right now for six months. <laughs> Say amen. amen. Say amen. <laughs> Say amen. <laughs> she knows that saying amen, it means that she will go back again. Whether amen or not amen. Amen. I put my stamp. All your connections, I break them for six uh, for six months. Shout hallelujah! Those that be, have been promising in the whole thing, I command that all of them will fail for six months. Shout hallelujah for some assignment. If you believe that, whether you like it or not, you try. It is done. Everybody say it is done. Shout hallelujah! It has been established. Do you want me to say the same thing about you? Uh, look at somebody say, "Don't bring your mat." Shout hallelujah! Can we go? Uh -huh. It has been established. You mark it. It will start from tomorrow. <laughs> David again brought how many? Together all the able what? Young men of what? Israel. 30,000. Can you see it? He and all the men went to Bala in what? In Judah to bring up from there the ark of God. Listen to me. It is very important. The glory of God will not come upon you unless you and I request for it. The glory will not come unless you what? You invite that glory or you request for that glory then somebody will say that what is the meaning of that let me tell you this if you are sitting somewhere without asking for God's glory church you will never get it unless you request for what for that glory the power and the glory of God was in the ark. Am I right? As we all know. But the word of the Lord says that David didn't sit. But David and his men, 30,000 men, went for it. They went to ba Bala and to bring back the ark. Then somebody will say that I want to hear more. And you will hear it. So when they went to Bala and brought the what? The ark of what? The covenant. Was how many men? 30,000 men. Shout amen. In Judah. To bring back the what? The ark of God. Which is called by the name. The name of the almighty God. Who is enthroned. Am I right? Between what cherubim on the ark, they set number three, they set the ark of God on a new cut. They set the ark of God on a new what cut. Shout hallelujah! They set the ark of God, not that old one, but the new one. The moment somebody change from something old a new thing automatically happens when they brought back the glory or the ark of God they didn't put it in the old one cut but they put it in the new one Everybody shout hallelujah. Anyone, anyone. And brought it from the house of Abinadab. Can you see it? Which was on the hill. Uzziah and Ahio 
sons of what? Abinadab were guarding the new camp. Which the ark of God was on it. Was on what? On it. Let me tell you this. You and I, we are the carrier of God's glory. <laughs> Without you and I, the glory of God will never be what? Be seen. We have to allow ourselves as a new cap. Am I right? So that the glory of God will what? Will sit on us. And when you become a carrier of God's glory, you will always attract but not subtract. Everybody shout hallelujah. Today by the message of God, I command you from the level of subtraction and to the level of plus. When you, when you become eh, or when you read to the level of subtraction, people will always kick you. But when you, be, when you read to the level of plus, it will be very difficult for people to what? Kick you out. Shout hallelujah. When they brought the ark of God, the word of the Lord says that they didn't put it in an old cart, but they put it in a new cart. I don't know if you are ready today to carry God's glory. If you are ready, then the Lord wants you to be a new cat, but not the old one. How come just ordinary act, 30,000 men, has to go with David? 30,000 men. How many? 30,000 men. May the Lord have mercy on us. Amen. Everybody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. It is very important. Look at verse 5. Hmm. Verse 5. David and all Israel were Sally what? Britain. Am I right? With all their might. With all their what? With all their what? With all their what? With all their what? With all their might. Church, anytime you want to dance, you have to dance with your might. If you want to sing, you must sing with your might. If you want to preach, you must preach with your might. David didn't just dance, but David danced with his might. Do you know the meaning of the word called might? It means that David danced with his heart. Anytime you do something for God, do it with your heart. If you want to preach, preach from your heart. Not just because I know how to preach. Not just because I have a big wish. No, I must preach from my heart. You must dance from your heart. You must sing from your heart. When you sing from your mouth, it will not touch people. But when you sing from your heart, it will touch people. When you dance from your heart, it will touch God. When you preach from your heart, it will touch people. But when you preach from your mouth, it will not touch people. So it means that everything that you want to do, do it from your might. We have some singers that sing from their mouth because they have voice. Oh, people will shout hallelujah. But we have some people that when they sing, without even a man of God touching people, they receive their healing. It means that they sing from the might of Jehovah. We have some preachers. When they preach, oh, come and see. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Because big words, they can rap and everything and sugarcoat some things. But let me tell you this. It is the anointing that makes 
des défauts. A whole king danced with his mat, might from heart. A whole king. King David. If King David dance, eh, then you and I, we have no excuses. Am I right? God has given you a hand. God has given you a feet. God has given you mat. Am I right? If you don't even know how to dance, eh, it doesn't matter. What the Lord wants to know from you is that you must dance from your heart. Am I right? Your dancing can go on anti-clockwise, but God sees the heart. Not somebody who knows how to dance. You know how to dance, you can dance good, but it doesn't matter. But you must dance from your heart. Dancing from your heart will touch heaven. But dancing because I know how to dance, people will just look at you, but it will not benefit you. But you must dance from your heart. You must sing from your heart. A whole king dance from his might. Do you know the reason why King David danced? Because they brought back the ark. And the ark represents the glory. The ark represents the power. That is what David started dancing. Church, by the grace of God, you and I will dance. Do you know the reason why? Because the glory of God is coming back. And let me tell you, you will enter the atmosphere of dancing. Whereby no one will force you to dance, but you will dance because you are going to hear good news. No one will force you to sing, you will sing because you are going to hear good news. Receive it. Am I speaking to somebody? Am I talking to someone? They brought back the ark from the house of Abinada. And his two children, powerful sons, they guided the what? The ark. Church, let me tell you this. When the glory of God comes upon you, you have to guide it. Amen. Guide the glory. Don't joke with it. Because when it departs from you, you will become like ordinary man. It is the glory that can make you to become somebody. It is the glory that can cause people to regard you. It is the glory that can cause people to shake hand on you. But when the glory departs from you, i.e. cabal, it means the glory of God has departed. You become like empty vessels. And empty vessels make noise. Shout hallelujah. So I prophesy to you, when you receive the glory, you must guide it. Amen. That is what David said, as the deer parted for water, so my soul parted for thee. And when the anointing came upon him, that one time David sinned against God, he went before God, he said, cast me not that way from thy presence, O Lord. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of salvation and renew a right spirit in me. Take not thy glory. We are the carrier of God's glory. You must protect it. Do you know what the enemy or your enemies they are after? It's not because of the way you are, but they are after your glory. And do you know the reason why the devil is after your glory? The enemy is jealous about your glory. Because he has experienced it before. And now he doesn't have it. 
he's trying to get it but he doesn't want to he, he can't get it so anytime he sees somebody who has God's glory you will become a threat to Satan when the witches take your glory as a woman people will look at you and everything but they will kick you like trash they will treat you like trash but when the glory comes upon your life the glory of God attracts you must go for it that is why when we come to the house of God started praising the name of God you know in terms of worship the time that God has to release his glory you will see somebody looking at the shoes amen amen Blessings, and whereby you have to forget about your suit, your dress, and everything. Shout hallelujah! You will see somebody holding the what did they call it? The uh, the wig or the uh, uh, kele or something with incense giving. Hey, no, no. Power am I belong to? If you have power, you have to slap that person. That, that is called uh, the physical slap to take the, all the. And you hear somebody, tau tau, tau tau, and balu. Power up. Can you go to immigration office? Whereby you've been interviewed by the officer and at the same time chewing gum. Officer will ask you, how many years have you been here? Officer, can you do that? How much more about the one who created the officer? The one who owns America? The one that our president is in what? In his hand. The almighty God. Meeting with angels. Angelic hosts. Stop that behavior. Amen. Stop that behavior. He has given you the privilege to have a meeting with him. Come and let us reason together. We some people wanted to get, but they couldn't get them. And God has given you the privilege, and you are abusing it. Do you know something? When you finish praising him and give him thanks, some things will be released. And that thing that will come upon you is the glory of God. Listen to me. The glory of God changes. It can change your life. It can change your countenance. It can change your, excuse me, with due respect, I beg everybody, church, it can even cause you to become handsome. It can cause you to become beautiful. Excuse me, excuse me. People can see you, excuse me, like a monkey. But when glory comes upon your life, they will see you in a different way. When the glory came upon Moses, his countenance changed. And the people couldn't even look at his face. They have to bow. Don't joke with the glory. And the glory dwells in the ark. And who is the ark? You are the ark. They brought the ark of God. And David started dancing. Giving praise. With his what? With his mind. Look at verse 5. David, all the, uh, excuse me. David and all the Israelites, am I right? 
celebrating with the award with all the award might before the lord before the lord not before any man before the lord so when you come here and when you begin to dance not for any man but you dance before the lord shout hallelujah am i right we dance before the lord the way your mentality eh, when you begin to dance eh, if your man is that excuse me i am shaking shaking something something so that howard will see something something you've already received your reward but i am shaking pegging pelling jumping moving up and down doing some measure eh, going on eh, with a zone push eh. i am doing it to glorify god but not any man shout hallelujah the moment you put your mind that I am doing it to glorify God, then the glory of God will come upon you. Shout hallelujah. So if you are a singer, be a singer that carries God's glory. But not a singer that has voice. Your voice can attract men, but your voice cannot change. You need a voice that can change life. You need a voice that can release healing. They brought it. Everybody shout hallelujah. Everybody shout amen. amen. They brought it with the Lord. Am I right? With cascade what? Net. Can you see it? Harps. Can you see it? Tambrains. Can you see it? Uh, chambers. Can you see it? Can you see all of them here? Harps, you can see them. Do you have harps here? Do you have, uh, 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 what did they call it? Uh, uh, Jamboree, do you have some here? You just shake them and just begin to sing to glorify the name of the Lord. They brought all of them halves and you can name them everything, trumpet and everything, all of them. And David started dancing, blessing the name of the Lord. Shout amen. When they came, when they came to the strengthened world of what? Nakon. Uziah reached out and took hold of the what? Of the ark of God. Because, look at it, because the ocean, the what? Stumble. And the Lord angered Ben against Uziah. Because of his irrelevance. Can you see it? At Therefore God struck him down. And he died there. Beside the ark. Hey, the ocean stumbled. Thought that hey. If I don't hold it God will fall. And God said are you stupid? You don't respect? Who told you that I will fall? Are you the one who have to touch me? It's only the levers. You have no right to touch me. You don't respect. And the next time he struck, the guy did the right thing. But why God have to strike him to death? Because God has said that it's only the levers. Look at this. Uzziah had a good mind. Wanted to help God. And God killed him. So what about those who have the bad mind? that wants to touch you unlawfully. Because you are the ark. If you touch the ark or wanted to help God with good mind and God killed him, how much more about you who carries God's glory? It means that when somebody tries to touch you unlawfully in a bad way, what will happen to that person? Your God will not have any choice than to what? Than to strike. And today I prophesy unto you that I don't care whether sister, auntie, 
mama, brother, a cousin, or someone who wants to touch you unlawfully. May your God act upon his way. Those who want to touch you with sickness, may the Lord act upon his word. Those who want to touch you unlawfully, may they die. May they die. Those who want to touch you with any sickness, may your God fight your battle for you. You will not die, but you will rather live and declare the words of the Lord. If I'm prophesying to somebody, shout hallelujah. I say you shall not die, but you shall rather live. You will live. And declare the words of the Lord. If you believe that, shout Amen. Who is the ark of God? You are the ark. You carry the Lord's blessing. You carry God's glory. Everybody shout hallelujah. Look unto your neighbor and say, neighbor. You are untouchable. Anybody that wants to touch you unlawfully must surely die church i'm not the one who wrote it do i have a printing press company and god killed him say that you have no right to touch me can i show you something Many men of God have preached about this. I have preached about this topic for so many times. But let me tell you this. Because you and I, we represent the ocean, we can stumble, but we will not fall. Amen. 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 Is the ocean that what? Stumble. But God was still on top. <laughs> God was still what? On top. on top. How can you carry God's presence and stumble and fall? You have to rise up again. Because you are the carrier of God's divine agenda. When you fall, the agendas of God will fall. And because you carry God's agenda, you will not fall. God will keep you and hold you until you finish his agenda. But everyone that have agenda from the pit of hell against your life that has been sent from the satanic kingdom against you, they will fall they will never succeed. Look at somebody and say, they will never succeed. Let me tell you this. Anybody that have designed demonic agenda against your life, they have planned something, listen to me. The prophecy of Psalm 2 will come to pass today. Why did the nation conspire? The kings of the earth said themselves, rulers take counsel together against the Lord, not Frank Jomo, against the Lord first and his anointed. And the one that enthroned in heaven laugh. Everybody shout hallelujah. The one that enthroned in heaven, what? Laugh. And he said, I will speak unto them in my anger. So let me tell you this. If you don't understand the movement of God on the things of God, you always belittle your God. Listen to me. God will never crush your enemies the time that they will start planning evil about you. He will let them finish the agenda. And when they are about to bring it on your table, then he will smash it. Everybody shout amen. amen. As Donald Trump recently said, I think yesterday or so, that with all this money, time moving up and down, if I don't win, it's a waste of time. I don't know if some of you heard. 
So the demons, God will sit down for your enemies to plan, design the agendas, plan everything and everything. When they are about to bring them, he will smash his enemy to become waste of time. And my brother, I have to be very careful for that word not to come to pass. Because according to his word, so shall he be. Everybody shout hallelujah. Because waste carries power. Why my brother have to say waste of time? Because if you don't take care, what comes out from your mouth is what you get. So when you are feeling some things, do not say, oh, look at this. I'm, I think I would die. I think I'm good. I think I, 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 I think this thing. No, 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 no. You always have to make a positive confession. Am I speaking to somebody? What do the nation conspire? Everybody shout amen. amen. Everybody shout amen. amen. Everybody shout amen. amen. Look at what happened, verse 8. Let me show you something. Thank you, Jesus. Can you see verse 8? Then David was, David was what? Angry. Am I right? Because the Lord's wrath has broken out against Uzziah. And to this day, the place is called Perish Uzziah. Shout amen. David was very angry. Shout amen. That the Lord killed. Look at this. David was what? Angry. Am I right? Just angry. But David didn't cross the line. God could have put him in. At times, some of you can be a little bit angry. God, when are you going to visit me? Oh, Lord God Almighty. Oh, well, well, look at this. I pay my tithe. I do everything. Friday services, everything, Lord. I've been serving you wholeheartedly. And the whole thing, look at what my enemies are doing. Look at the things they have been saying about me. Father, may you rise up and do something. And God will be silent in the whole thing. And at times, if you want to cross the line, you say that about God. You know something? I know that you are the God Almighty. You are the supernatural God. Because you don't want to cross the line. Cross it. Open your mouth. You say you know how to talk. Cross it. <laughs> Have you been there before? I've been there before. Shout hallelujah. And you change your topic and you started praising me. You are the amazing God. All things are possible. I know that you do. But God, you know, I know that you are supernatural God. But God, you have to rise up and you rush it. Rush it. Be early. Oh Lord, do not let my enemies triumph over me. You change your topic. He knows all your plans. Because you wanted to cross the line. Because you have a big mat. He will grab it and tell you, shut up. <laughs> shout amen. Does it make sense to somebody? So when you become angry, you must what? Always be very careful. Because words carries power. power. Excuse me, with due respect, don't become stupid to say some things when you become and later on you will apologize. The words that will come out from your mouth, you cannot bring it back. The person will have forgiven you, but check, it has already registered here. So do not let it out. Think before you talk. David was angry, just. We didn't hear David talking or saying some things, am I right? Because he knew his what? The limit. He said, let me keep my mouth shut, because this Papa God will add me to it. He said, this place, I will name it the Paris Uzziah. I don't know. Shout hallelujah. Whether someone in Israel, one of the junction or street, shout amen. Name the place. That's it. David was afraid of the Lord that day. And he said, look at this. David was afraid of the Lord, the Lord that day. Why David was afraid? 
Why David was afraid? Because of what happened to Uzziah. David was afraid. He said, hey, is that how God is? My God. The ocean stumbled and was about to. And Uzziah just, Uzziah didn't do anything wrong. Just touch it and you kill. I have to be, what? Afraid of this God. And David was afraid of the Lord that day. He said, how can I, look at it, how can I, <laughs> how can the ark of the Lord ever come to me? David advised himself. Because of what happened to Uzziah. Huh? I saw it with my eyes. That the guy touched it and got killed. How can I take this thing in my house? <laughs> I'm looking for somebody. Can I, can I get someone? So that it, it means that in his mind, he wanted to take those, uh, you know, the ark to his what? To his house. But because of what happened, the guy said, I'm looking for somebody. How can I take this in my what? In my house. And ten, he was not willing to take the ark of the Lord to be with him in the city of David. Instead, instead, he took it to the house of Obed Edom. Look at this. Hey, Obed Edom. Yes, king, king, may you live forever. Hey, Obed Edom, you know, I sense it in the realms of the spirit. That the ark of God has to come to your house. Let it rest there for a while. And we, we will know. And inside, deep down in his mind, the guy wanted to run from it. Obed Edom, the king has spoken. Who am I to reject the king's order? Obed Edom said, King, may you live forever. And I believe that Obed will say it in his mind that you, a whole king, wants to run from it and you are not telling me so you and your children you don't want to die me and my children we have to die no problem i will carry it but i will advise myself i don't know what i've done wrong all the people in israel i am the only one that you mentioned obed edom to bring this trouble look at what this thing uh, did to uziah and obed edom said i will take it everybody shout hallelujah and look at verse 11. The ark of the Lord that represents God's glory remained in the house of Obed, what? Edom. Shout hallelujah. Of what? For how many months? For three months. Look at this. For three months. Look at what happened. For three months. Instead of that ark to kill, look at what happened. Three months. And the Lord blessed him and his entire household. Why? Because of the act. If you and I will know our limits, you will see God in a different way. But when you cross your boundary, he will show you where power lies. The same act that kills, the same act started blessing. blessing. Shout amen. amen. Come and see. Obed Adam. Let's take it 500 sheep. It turned into 2,000. 500 donkeys. It turned into 3,000. And Obed's children, all of them started passing, you know, receiving some distance. Harvard, you know, Yale, you know, started going to. Uh, Obed said, what is going on? So some people started seeing Obed. Uh, Obed Adam, you know, changed his car. Started using a new one. Obed started building another. All his children started, they said, ah, what is going on? So somebody sneaked himself. Went to King David and said, that King David, uh, may you live forever king. Since the day Obed Adam took that thing that you rejected, God has started blessing him. David said, are you sure? You must call me Obed Edom. I must rush and bring the ark back. Shout hallelujah. He said, that, hey, Obed Edom. He said, that came may you live forever. He said, Obed, you must bring the ark of the Lord back. 
to the city of David. Shout hallelujah. Why? Because when David found out that the Lord started blessing him, David needed the blessings. That is why, or that was the time he too, he requested for the ark. Everybody shout hallelujah. Everybody shout glory be to God. Let me tell you this. You are God's divine career agenda. When somebody rejects you, the person will reject the blessings. When they accept you, they will accept the blessings. And David said, you must go at once and tell Obed-Edom to bring back the ark to the city of David. Do you know the reason why David requested for it? Please watch the baby for me. Do you know the reason why? Because David too needed the blessings. By that time, Obed has already grabbed the blessings. Everybody shout hallelujah. Everybody shout glory be to God. Let me tell you this. The glory of God always brings what? Blessings. David said you must bring it at once. And Obed said whether you like it or not. I am a household, three months, we really, really what? Enjoy the blessings. Shout hallelujah. Let me tell you this. Listen to me very well. When God gives you assignment, do not shift it on someone. When God gives you assignment, do not shift it on what? On somebody. The things that you have to do. Or you're supposed to do in this ministry. Do it. Amen. Out of that. Your blessings will appear. Amen. If someone doesn't want to sing right. Sing right. If somebody doesn't want to come to the practice, do not let that person, what, break your spirit. That this one is not here, this one is here. You can do it alone. When someone sees a trash and doesn't want to take it from here, bend down and pick it up. And out of that, your blessings will come. David thought that let me put all the wahala and all the problems upon Ben what? Adam. Not knowing that God has already mentioned Ben Adam's name. That I want to spend three months with you. 90 days. And for me to transform your life. And God, in his own wisdom, transformed the life of what? Obed what? Adam. And the entire children. Because David was what? Afraid that the ark will kill him. What do you need today? And what do you want today? If you know how to comport yourself before God's act, you will see God in a different way. Amen. But when you cross your boundary, God at times can be wicked. It's only the Levites that have to carry the act. Usually you are not part of the Levites. Just leave it. There is no way you can help me. Can I use two minutes to show somebody something? Some people at times want to fight for God, but they will end up to become enemy of God. Oh, this one I don't understand. I will fight for the Lord. Oh, this one I don't. I will do this and that. Let me tell you this. God can fight his battle. When you try to fight for him, you can become his what? His enemy. He can fight for himself. 
God didn't what? Stumble. Am I right? It was the what? The ozil. But not God. So you see, what do you have to place the, uh, 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 what do you have to touch me? Don't you know that I have said that touch not my anointed? And do my prophet know her? What do you have to touch me? I can't help myself. At times, some people want to help God. I will fight for the Lord. Oh, this one I don't understand. Leave it. Let God fight his battle. Today, the ark of God is looking for somebody. And if you and I will be like a bad what? Adam. And to allow the ark to come into your house, your entire family, your life will what? It will change. Shout hallelujah. Who called Abed, Adam? Is that not David? Why David rejected the ark? Because of the things that what? Happened. Because he was afraid. The destination of that ark has to be in the city of what? David. David. But the ark did a time of transition in the house of Obed Edom. Allow God to enter your house. Allow God to what? Enter your house. When David heard that three months God has changed the life of Obed Edom, David rushed. He said, I go and bring that ark back to my city, the city of David. Shout hallelujah. Say, hey, if I knew, I could have. I could have, but it was late. This is your time, your season, and your hour. Go for God's glory. Do not sit down and wait for his glory. You have to go for it. If you are sitting, waiting for God's glory, church, I beg you, there is no way you will get it. But you must go for it Amen. and you will get it Amen. are you ready to go for it yes. if you are ready be on your feet and shout hallelujah Amen. shout glory be, glory be to God look at somebody and say you must go for it, go for it. look at somebody and say you must go for it you go for and you will get it yes. everybody shout hallelujah. hallelujah when you allow God in your what in your own house Church, God will not destroy you, amen. but he will rather bless you. Amen. Shout amen. amen. Let me tell you this. David, let me go to Bala in Judah to bring the ark to the city of David. But because of what the Lord did, David rejected God and said, I stay here for a while. I don't know the reason why you are so angry. Maybe you can kill me. So stay here. When your temper and everything cools down, then I will bring you back. The Lord said, eh, I know. So you only need to kill Abed Adam and his children. I will turn it into blessing. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you this before we pray. Do not try to hide God's blessing. Because whether you like it or not, people will notice it and they will go and tell. Because we have some people that they have been monitoring you. They have been hired by Satan. They know the kind of dress you wear. When you change even your wake style, they know. If you don't know. When you even put black, they know. Brown, they know. They know every when you even change your cologne, they know. They smell if you don't know. So the day the blessings of God will come upon your life, they will know. And they will be the same people that will go out there and say that the Lord. Who told David? Who told David that the Lord has blessed uh, what? Obed Adam. Who told David? The question is not Obed Adam that went to David and said that God has been. It's some people that went there. 
It means that you have some people monitoring you. Yes. But Adam wanted to hide it, but come and see. Oh, his countenance changed. The way he used to walk and the way his car, that old car started, they said, ah, this man, what is going on? What is going on? Is that not the act? But by the way, the question is, how come that somebody found out that it was because of the act? You don't know. We have inquisitive people that they know some things in your house even than you yourself. I believe that somebody walked to him and said, Obed, you started changing, you and your children. Obed, we give glory to God. And Obed, to, instead of him to keep his mouth shut, oh, my brother, is the Lord doing, you know, since the day, the act, he said it in the good man. The person said, hey, you alone have to enjoy the blessing. David must hear it. And the time David came, it was already too late. God has already blessed Obed Adam. May you be blessed like him. Yes. Can you go for God's glory? Yes. Can you go for God's power? Yes. Can you invite them? Yes. Then this afternoon, I command you to invite God's presence. Let me tell you, inviting God's presence comes in three things. And I will tell you, if God permit next week, shout amen. Lift up your two hands.